Hello students on popular demand, uh, here I am um, presenting to you a video in which we're going to talk completely about the BITSAT examination conducted um, by the BITS. So uh, the Birla Institute of Technology and uh, Science Aptitude Test, that's the BITSAT, uh, is conducted by the Birla Institute of Technology and Science, that's the BITS. It's to offer admission to interested candidates in its BE. Uh, pharma MSc programs. BITSAT exam is a computer-based test, the CBT, the computer-based test, uh, uh, which aspirants need to clear in order to secure admissions at the BITS campus, which is located at the Pilani, Goa and Hyderabad. So typically it deals with the subjects like physics, chemistry and maths, 40 uh, marks for physics and chemistry and 45 marks for maths and that's three marks each. Uh, for the right, so you're tested for the ability to get the right scores, and at the same time, for every wrong uh, answer, you're going to lose one mark. There is native marking. Uh, along with that comes English, English proficiency, and um, and logical reasoning. Now, proficiency is that the right pronunciation? I don't know, um, but well, I hope it's the right pronunciation. English proficiency. Uh, sorry, if it's not the right pronunciation, just cut it, cut it from there, okay? All right, uh, so the total score over here is 350. 350 is the total score, and in terms of questions, you are given 150 questions. It's going to be a race against time between JEE and BITS. It's going to be a real race against time, how you do it. 320 out of 450, you have a fair chance to get into the BITS Pilani colleges, or the BITS colleges, and if, if, if you are really motivated and your ability to study and stay put is very high, then you can cross 350, and the moment you cross 350, I am telling you that you can get into the highest stream, in the best stream that you want, in the college that you want, uh, with 350 out of 450 uh, marks. So aspiring students, make sure that you get physics, chemistry and maths in at least a 75% in your 10 plus 2 examination. Uh, that's very important. And for biology, pharma students, you must be scoring against 75% in your bio as well. If a candidate has taken more than one attempt in class 12 or the equivalent according to state, IG or whatever, um, then his latest performance will be considered. Latest performance will be considered. Students who have passed the 12th standard examination in 2014 or earlier are not eligible to give this year's uh, BITSAT examination in 2017. Students who are presently studying in any of the BITS campuses are also not eligible to give the BITS examination in 2017. So if you're looking for a stream change or a subject change, you cannot give the BITS examination one more time. That's the only two uh, disqualifying parameters over here. Admissions will be made purely on merit. So good luck for your meritorious studying academic program, getting the concepts in place, and you're having good straightforward questions, but they're very conceptual and it's a race against time and there's a lot of negative markings. The BITSAT 2017 examination will be based on objective type multiple choice questions. Candidates will be evaluated on the basis of how many answers you've got right. Your edge over your competitor is going to be how many least minimum negative marking, uh, markings are you going to attract and Kitna answers of Kasahi Rega. That's going to be your edge, and all of this has to happen in the least amount of time. It will be a three hour duration computer based online engineering examination, which will be divided into four sections of four parts. Each section will have questions from different subjects such as physics, chemistry, English proficiency, logic reasoning, as well as mathematics. BITSAT question paper will consist of questions in the above mentioned subject, which I've just mentioned, to be taught to the students in the part of a 12th grade syllabus. There's also certain aspects which will come to you, which is outside the syllabus, which is going to be logic reasoning, and which is going to be application-based, high-order thinking questions. So like I said, a total of 150 questions wherein candidates have to select the correct answers from the four given options. Every correct answer, the candidate will be awarded three marks, and for every wrong answer, one mark will be taken away from you. So, you know, your focus not only has to be to get the right answers right, but it also has to be to avoid the negative marking. No section wise time limit as per the BITSAT 2017 examination pattern rules and norms. However, candidates will have to complete their entrance examination in the given three hour duration. Thus, Candidates are given the freedom to go and attempt any question they want and also go back and edit a particular question uh, into the options or go back previously to a question which you did and make amends, make changes, whatever you want. But everything has to be finished or completed in the stipulated three hour time duration. So like I said, a decent score in BITSAT is a score about 320 and considered exceptionally good if you have crossed uh, 350 scores. That's the caliber to grab the top branches um, in BITSAT. Well, while gearing up for BITSAT examination, don't waste your time solving lengthier questions. But the key to success is to solve the shorter questions which are trickier and high order, very conceptual because in BITSAT they don't really ask you those lengthy and long questions. They ask you these direct 
fast, intelligent, high order, application based computing questions. Time management is going to be very, very important. Even though you have uh, the ability to go back and forth and give your answers, but time management is very important. Time management to know how much time you should be able to give to one without really checking time, uh, wasting time there, going back and forth. You must be able to solve a question in its full integrity and speed and length and getting the concepts right and then moving to the next one, avoiding the mistake of going back into the question. So see that you do that well and really, really well. Dividing time for separate questions is going to be a key. Of the three hours of the examination, spent not more than one and a half hour on chemistry so that you can devote the remaining time for the other section. Math is going to be time consuming. It's going to eat up more than 60 or sometimes even 18 minutes so uh, save it very well uh, plan for physics and English proficiency and logical reasoning that's going to be very important you need to absorb even that unlike GAE all questions hold the same weightage over here unlike JEE all the questions over here hold the same weightage this gives you a sharp advantage on focusing on solving shorter questions before lengthier ones that's the key uh, to solve and succeed in BITSAT Questions pertaining to English and logical reasoning do not require calculations, but only the analysis. Hence, these together should not be allowed to, to take more than 30 to 40 minutes of your entire time zone. So you see, categorizing it and playing it well is going to be so important. This type is a computer-based uh, testing pattern. So if you're used to the paper and pen technology, um, you need to quickly alter yourself to the way the examination is being uh, designed for you so that examination simulation has to be important and you get ready for it the way it is being conducted. So practice it in the right way and not just in the paper. Well, BITSAT is the only examination amongst all the examination which you will be giving at this particular level which provides the candidates with a bonus question. Along with the sum total of 150 questions, it allows the students to attempt an extra 12 questions. Now, this comes with a catch. What is the catch? The catch is here. Once you begin to attempt the bonus questions, you can't go to your 150 questions and you can't review that, edit it or do anything about it. So before you go to attempt the uh, bonus questions, make sure that your 150 questions are proper, right and then only go. Many students go for this uh, bonus questions. Uh, it's a risky sum. If you're lucky, you get it through. So, so wish you that bonus questions, you plan it well and you do it well so that you don't get trapped uh, into the catch. So the negative marks which BITSAT gives is just one fourth as compared to the JE examination. So it may it may look like it's too little, but you considering the large number of questions that you have, you cannot really ignore the small negative marking as well. Now you must be very sure in particular with English because English has 15 questions and considering the cutthroat competition that, uh, that BITSAT is having, you must be very ready verbal, logical, diction, vocabulary, grammar, in every particular way be ready and I strongly recommend that you pick up the Arihant or the MTG book. If there is one particular book which is exclusively tailored the way Bitsat asks uh, its questions, I think it's Arihant. You should pick up the Arihant prescription. In the description I have given the link from where you can pick up the Arihant from Amazon or Flipkart. Uh, you can buy these books uh, available uh, from the Arihant uh, publication. A little more on the bonus questions uh, that I would like to share with you is this. Uh, you must note the following things. You need to attempt all the 150 questions before you go to your bonus questions, the 12 bonus questions that you have. You will not be given additional time to attempt the bonus questions. So you have to finish your 150 questions, save the time towards the end if you really are confident and save that time only after you finish trusting your gut, using all your educative knowledge, academic background, yes, sub karne ke baad go for the 12 questions. Otherwise, don't mess up with the 12 questions when you're losing marks over here. You cannot go back to those 150 questions once you begin to attempt the bonus questions. Remember that. Uh, you, you, when should you, okay, the question is when should you begin to attempt the uh, bonus questions and when you should not. So, well, the moment you finish the 150 questions and you think you have 25 minutes left, that's the time when you make a decision to go. But before you make the decision, you must check that and be confident that at least 135 questions out of 150 you have attempted. So once you're confident about these 135 questions out of 150, that's the time when you go into it. You have made all your educative guesses, you have put all your gut and trust into place, um, then and then only you go for these extra questions. Uh, if you have any memory-based questions left from those 150, I would recommend you first do that before you go to your bonus question. If there's any lengthy calculations left in your 150 segment, I would suggest you do that before you go to your 12 bonus questions uh, because that's where you, you have a better ability and chance to score more marks. Uh, I would always recommend children to give the BITSAT also because BITSAT is a lot easier as compared to JEE. Now why is it easier? It is easier because it's only a speed game. 
uh, and it's straight and direct questions. It's about how many conceptual questions you can solve in the least amount of time. But in JE, it's going to be speed and accuracy both. Whereas in Bitstamp, it's going to be only speed. It's a speed game. The other catch is uh, that you, you have language and logical reasoning. So if you're great in English, you must give your Bits examination because that's going to have a better scope and a better landing. If you would like to listen from us a little more about the Bitsat examination and if you have some more additional queries about the Bitsat examination, do write to us in this comment section. Share this video if this has helped you. Like this video if you think this was valuable content. Read the description. Read every line of the description and also refer to the blog post because we're going to give additional information in the description as well as in the blog post regarding the Bits examination. Uh, good luck to you. Work exclusively well with your speed parameters, English proficiency, as well as your language control and, uh, and logic reasoning. Putting all of this together, I'm sure you can crack your BITSAT examination in the least amount of time. Uh, don't fall for the bonus questions really quick. Uh, plan well. It's, it's going to be everything from the NCRT curriculum itself. Unlike the JEE, you don't have to go really out and out and look for tough questions. Uh, follow the JEE, follow the Arihant book, read the description well, believe in yourself, follow your gut, and just do well.